So before we get hate mail on you left off somebody, remember <laughs> it, it had to work with all devices in order to make our list. Why don't we start out with why would anybody quickly need a dongle deck? Well, seeing as 98% of the phones on the market these days no longer have a headphone port, if reason. you're going to use audio from your phone and you don't want to go to Bluetooth, you know, if you already own wired headphones, chances are you're going to need one of these. So we see a lot of people who've gone to streaming on their phones and using it as a primary source of audio. But at the same time, we're seeing that trend. We've seen them all remove the headphone jack, which seems a little counterintuitive. So. And we've been and we've been rating a whole bunch of these. And I think we want to start off with the caveat of some of them don't work with every phone. Could you expand on that? Sure. There are a lot of them that either only come with a USB type C connection at which point you're having to go get the apple camera kit a usb type c to type a adapter and it becomes very clunky to make sure everything's hooked together things like that others won't work even if you do that because they draw too much power um you know i, I dearly love the little apogee groove it's a great little dongle but it draws enough power that it won't work at all with apple devices and even some you know androids are not happy with it. Uh, it delete or depletes the battery fairly quickly. So when we set out to do this list, everything on here, it has to be device agnostic. Uh, it was one of our criteria was just to make sure that if we were going to make a recommendation that it wasn't with this, that, or the other caveat, because it just became too difficult to keep up with what works with who. The one we have on the screen here is made by DD Hi-Fi. The TC35i, this is with the lightning connector. Um, they also make one with a USB-C connector, um, similar version, but super tiny. How do they cram so much technology into a small device? Very carefully. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's kind of amazing, to be honest. These were kind of the darling of the show when we, we went to the, the show in, LA, or in Long Beach, and uh, we had probably 30 dongles out there in price ranges that, you know, from absolutely inexpensive to ridiculous. And I would say these probably got more attention uh, because of that size. And because everybody first looked at them and said, how'd they get it in there? And then they plugged it in and tried it when, and how'd they get it to sound that good? So. Right. This is a $40. I think they make versions, $40, $50, depending on the connector. And, and these are kind of the, to my mind, the, the, the dongle deck for somebody who's not really sure they need one, mm. you know, they're incredibly convenient. You can stick it in a pocket and forget you have it, right. um, things like that. And then if the need arises, Hey, Oh yeah, I've got this, I can pull out and you know, I've, I've given away several of these because I had friends that didn't have one at the time and I had mine in my pocket. That's right. exactly the kind of use you, you end up mm -hmm. doing with them. Right. Right. All right, well, let's jump into our next one. Um, we've covered the DD Hi-Fi TC35. It's TC35i, 35B. Um, if you happen to come across those models, those are the same ones with different connectors on the end. But the next one on the list this is um, the HiDiz S9 Pro. Correct. Great. This one is, this is a step up. You're into about $120 on the retail side. We expect it'll probably be around 99, somewhere in there. Might even get a little bit better discounts than that come Black Friday. Um, this one gives you a little bit more, a uh, bit of a step up in, in DAC chip and function. The limit on the DD is usually, I think it's 40, uh, you know, the initial one was 1648 on the, uh apple version of it the usb goes up a little higher than that but this one goes up to 32 384 supports mqa supports dsd 512 and also has balanced uh, both of the little dd hi-fis are strictly a 3.5 millimeter single-ended output port um, this one has a 2.5 millimeter balanced in addition to the 3.5 millimeter single ended. So a little more versatile, a little higher power and a little bit higher scale on these without going 
but you know considerably higher on the price point so there are an awful lot of DACs or you know little dongle DACs on the market that very similar feature set to this there are very few of them that are at the price point this one is all right um so step up in sound quality over the dd hi-fi or how do you we're going to step yeah, up and... st step up in file format support I, I i don't know that i'd necessarily say if you were playing the same file between both that you're going to see a monumental difference in the two but if you have you know high bit rate files they're going to have to be downscaled in order to work on the dd hi-fis whereas this will support 32 384 out of the box so all right um lynn do you have anything else to add about the high dis uh, will sent me a whole box of these to try out and i gotta say i did like this one and at the price i think it's a very fair choice for this price point um audio quality wise i we're, we're getting into a lot of different factors if we're going to talk about this one's better than this one sound wise mm -hmm. but it, it is almost the the higher price the more you get and the more right. abilities as opposed to the the pure sound quality but that's a very nice option at that price all right now we're going to step up to around 150 dollars with the third one on our list uh the quest style m12 um what do we what do we gain by a little bit pricier model um over the high days one of the things you get is that quest isle has always had a current amplification mode device rather than being the typical voltage amplification and it's splitting hairs when you're talking about headphone amps but it is technically a different geometry internally and it does make a difference in the house sound other thing to know about all the the, the quest isle products though that, that's the first thing people notice is these actually have a power saving feature where they do not show up to the source device until you plug a headphone in so if you plug the dongle into your source device and you don't have anything plugged into the dongle, first thing you do is say, oh, this thing's broke. It won't even come on. Well, no, it's actually intentional and it's a power saving thing so that mm -hmm. unless you have a headphone plugged in, mm -hmm. it's not drawing power to the device. So a little bit different as far as the how they go about amplification with the current mode, which will make a difference sound wise. And, but do know that caveat that, yeah, if you don't plug something in, it's not broke. You just didn't turn it on. I think what I like about the Quest styles is they they have a very good ability to scale their sound no matter what the object. They make some of the absolute best desktop amplification models out there. They're DAPs. Um, they have issued touchscreen and focused more on the internals than the sound. I still have an old QP2R, which I've thought about selling many times, but I don't because I love the sound. And that has carried over to me directly to the M12 and the, and the M15, which is gonna be mentioned next. And I have to say out of all the ones we've tested, those two are, are head and shoulders above. They are my absolute favorite, regardless of the price. And I think it's because they, they let the sound through they don't put any house sound or um a richer or a warmer or a colder or more analytical sound on there they're of the ones that we've tested personally i think they, they just let the music show through the best of all of them all yeah. right one thing on that last picture you were showing shows the auto gain function on these these do auto sense impedance and will adjust gain appropriately to impedance. The one caveat is be careful if you have one of the early AKG 240s at 600 ohm. If it's over 600 ohm impedance, these actually switch to a line out mode because it thinks you plugged it in a, to a as a source device. And that means you lose your volume control. So if you have an older AKG 240 that's actually 620 ohm, this is not the device to pair with it. All right, that's really good to know. And I think that'll lead us to our top pick in the audiophile category. Questile gets another one. Um, this is the Questile M15. Yep, the big um, brother. Lynn, you want to take the first crack at this one? Sure. Um, Price-wise, yeah, it's a little bit more, but I think it brings more to the table. Again, Will can 
is better at the technical aspect of that. I do like the look of this one and the fact that you can look inside. There is a light on the inside which shows um, the rate, the frequency rate that's going on. So it's kind of a little nice gadget. But some people like that because then all they've got to do is look at it and go, oh, it's it's sampling at this rate, something along those lines. Um, again, sound quality wise, it's, I think, a little bit better than the M12. It does come, now correct me if I'm wrong, it, it's been a while since I've ever had this. It does come all, also two headphone jacks, a balanced and a 3.5, which yeah. is a nice feature to have. Um, many headphone and IEM manufacturers are making interchangeable jacks now like Dunu. So if you wanted to switch to um, a 2.5 balance, you switch the jack and still have the same cable. If you want to go back to 3.5 because that suits the genre you're listening to better, you can, but you can do both with this. So you're not limited to one of those yeah. one of those yeah. formats of, of either single under or balanced. Yeah, the other really nice thing with with the the balanced outputs is that they're capable of, of outputting more power than than the single ended version of the same thing. So, you know, while people with fairly sensitive in ears may like the M12, you know, it may be fine for them. If you're actually considering attaching, you know, a full size headphone, doing it with an M15 and a balanced cable is likely to get you a little more headroom, a little more output power from it. Uh, again, these are current mode amplification devices. The, you know, to Lynn's point, I, I think both of us really liked the CMA15, which was their desktop amplifier, and DAC, well, DAC amp, I should say. And I, I think yeah. this mobile, the mobile version of this, to to come in at under three hundred dollars. It, this thing is probably 90% of the CMA 15 as far as the sound you get out of it. So, I mean, it's, it's insanely cheap when you look at it as the mobile version of their desktop product that, you know, to my mind, there's a whole lot more engineering that takes to get into a form factor like this. And at the same time, the price is just, you know, comparatively right. non-existent. Yeah, the, the, this one really does compete well against desktop units as far as sound quality goes. Um, and that's why it took the top spot. You know, it's not inexpensive at nearly $300, but for what you get, it is inexpensive. And that, that's why it went there. Right. Um, so you mentioned something on power draw. Um, does that mean it's going to drain your phone battery more, the more power it's drawing, but yep. the more quality you may be getting out of the sound? Yeah, there, there's always a trade-off with these. And, and the simple fact of the matter is that it, a USB port is capable of outputting five volts at about 500 milliamps for a standard USB. Uh, some of the newer phones are capable of going up to about 900 milliamps, but that's that's the limit. And that's why these are never going to be as capable as a big desktop amplifier that's plugged into AC when you're trying to get you know, power a big planer or something like that that requires a fair amount of current to move it. You, know, you are limiting your battery life on your phone when you plug these in. All right. And so that's $269, not inexpensive, um, but the top of our list right now, there are some more expensive models. One honorable mention that we want to talk about, um, and that's the iFi Go Bar. Why do they make honorable mention? I think they're $329. Yeah, th they made honorable mention because Honestly, they, they rank right up with the M15 in, in most cases, sound-wise, things like that. Build quality, they're right there. Uh, capability, they're right there. So they lose out a little bit to the M15 purely because you're $50 more expensive. Uh, but the reason they came in with an honorable mention here is the X-Base and X-Space functions on the Go Bar that lets you tune the ambiance or slightly you know, enhance the bass are options that basically nobody else is doing. Uh, there are a few that have bass boost. Most of them don't do it very well if we're being blunt about it. Um, right. The, the iFi X bass is, is good because it doesn't try and do too much. Um, yeah, it's one of those where it's not going to go from being fairly light to just absolutely booming in your ears. It's just a very <laughs> subtle lift. 
So in this case, that additional functionality makes it worth looking at. And for some people, it may get the nod over the M15 for those functions. Which would be perfectly adequate. Um, iFi has a history of trying to cram, and it, that's probably not the, as much technology and advancements into their devices as possible. And that started with their IDSD series, their Pro Series, and it trickled down. Um, their XDXD, XDSC, DSD series is a very good, and all they did is they took that technology, updated it, and trickled it down. But I, I agree with what Will said is the base and the ambiance that they they don't overdo it with the, with the go bar. The others, you have the ability to fine tune how much base or how much wider, so to speak, you want that sound stage here. It's okay. We don't want to add too much complexity. So we're going to put in a, a modicum of that, which will still tell a difference. So iFi has been known for that for the last couple of decades for, adding that type of technology. All right. And I noticed this one has the single ended in the balanced output. We get a, a better view of it here. Is there any reason why you want to use one or the other, or is it just based on the headphone connection well, that you have? That's a dangerous <laughs> thing to open at this stage. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I, I think there are some reasons that, that both exist. I think you will find people in both camps, some that say one is a lot better than the other and others that say, no, it, it really depends on the circuit behind it, that the jack is a jack. And, right. you know, so w without going into great detail and another two hours worth of, worth of right. this and, and, <laughs> right. you know, getting hate mail from both camps, <laughs> um, it depends on who you ask, but they're, they're very definitely strong opinions on both sides of the discussion. Any closing thoughts you want to add before we wrap this up? I would add, re rem remember, as you comment on this, that we left out something that our criteria was it had to work with every device. So there are a lot of great devices. Uh, the K and RU6 immediately comes to mind that didn't make our list purely because they don't play nice with everybody. So before we get hate mail on you left off somebody, remember <laughs> it had to work with all devices in order to make our list. I would add that um, this is a very, very good first step, especially those people that might have a decent set of IEMs or headphones and only their smartphone. And this is a great way to put into into a little bit better sound um what they have and you know it could lead to the purchase of a desktop amp it could they could just be right. perfectly satisfied with this but it's a good first step if you want to upgrade the sound quality that you're listening to